Alright guys, I want to welcome you all back to some more of A Wickrium for Innocence. I also want to thank you guys for the likes and support you continue to give this series. As usual guys, I am always grateful. Thank you so much. And it also looks like we're finally going to see the beginning of Lord Jacopo. And how everything starts to unfold from there guys. So, I hope you all continue to enjoy watching because, yep, it's about to get even more depressing. So with that said guys, let's keep it rolling. Alright everyone, and we are back. Would waiting until she turned 16 really be putting it off for too long? How would I even go about saying it, assuming I actually did? Even if your face still isn't healed in 4 years, I'll take you as my lifetime partner, Morgana. God no, that's terrible. There has to be a better way to put it. So much for a nice relaxing birthday party. Morgana arrived as the sun was beginning to set and our preparations near completion. Myself, Maria, Jaren, and a handful of other girls who didn't have to work were gathered in the back room. Dishes stacked with food lined the floor, and our group sat in a circle around it, several different conversations going on at once. I apologize for not being able to assist in any way. Don't apologize, it's your birthday. Sit your little bum down and let the world revolve around you for once. If... If you insist. Atta girl. Hop on right down. Not in the freaking corner. Um, hey Morgana. There's space next to me. It's a much better spot than over there in the corner. You have easy access to anything you'd like to eat. Though I suppose if you want, I could get your food for you. I'll sit next to Maria. <laughs> Don't think I didn't hear that. Hi there, Morgs. How's the drink? Your head spinning yet? It most certainly is not. Well, let's make it spin. Let's make the whole world spin. Whee! Wine is only used for nourishment. It is not meant for base recreation. You shall be smit <laughs> smitten. Smitten down from above? If... It's fine, don't worry. Even God's taking the day off to get wasted out of his mind. How dare you disrespect the Lord like that? Mm Eat, drink, drink, eat, eat, drink. Wait, stop. I can't. Ah, I'm in heaven. My stomach's in heaven. Hmm. She's sound asleep. Girl, act like it's her birthday we're celebrating here. What do you say? Want me to give her a good whack upside the head? No, it's fine. Let her sleep. She looks so happy. I would almost feel bad at waking her. If you say so, you're the one in charge today. So, you and Jaren getting on alright? Huh? It looked like you were trying to keep your distance a little while back. I don't get that impression from you anymore, but if there's any friction at all, don't hesitate to let me know. I... Hmm? I'm getting along fine with her now. If anything does come up, I will tell you. Okay. Well, I'm really glad to hear it. With Jaren, it's... Well, what you see is what you get. Once you get past that, there's never, a dull, there's never a dull moment with her. Indeed. Although, it wasn't anything I did that cleared the air between us, but... Oh? Never mind. And this guy thinks because he's pain that means he can do whatever he feels like and I'm having to tell him to back off and just, ugh, I can't believe some of these guys. Ugh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I've got a good one too. The other day, this guy came in totally... <laughs> Wait, are you serious? Why didn't you tell me about this earlier? I haven't chased the pricks off I'd known. It seems like any time you get more than a couple of these girls together, conversation inevitably drifts back to work. Which, of course, is the subject of Morgana's least keen on. She looks like she wants to run away. Guess I gotta step in. You guys think you could maybe change the subject? Like we have anything else to talk about. Making the birthday girl want to hide in a corner defeats the whole purpose, don't you think? Oh no, don't mind me. I don't have anything I want to talk about. At least eat something then. I've eaten plenty, thank you. I'm quite full. 
Then how about the cookies? They're barely sweet and dry as rocks, but they're edible. Jacopo, you little... You got some stones to <laughs> talk my cookies like to my face. Stop it, Maria. Stop throwing things at me. <laughs> for God's sake, can you not show a modicum of decorum for just one day? Yeah, you're totally one to talk. You could try not being a massive dick for once in your life. Name one thing I've done to warrant this kind of abuse. You first, you're the one who started throwing accusations. There it is, right on the schedule, you two little lovebirds, fight, fight, fight. We are not lovebirds! But I don't even care anymore. You are right about one thing though. This is Morgana's day, so let's change the subject. Like I said, I don't have anything to talk about. Sure you do, you just have to look a little harder. That's say you have a, that's say you have to reminisce for us, it can be anything. Hmm, let's see, here's an idea. Are there any guys you got your eyes on? <laughs> there is. <laughs> what? Seriously? Holy cow. Who is it? Tell me, who's the lucky guy? God. Ah. Don't give me that look, I don't need your sympathy. If you're gonna dream, dream big, right? Yeah, I get where you're coming from, pining after the all-powerful, all-knowing god. I'm with you. You bald-faced liar. The grass may be a hell of a lot greener up there, but it's a bit far, don't you think? You're better off selling for the weeds down here. Did she just simply- did she just imply I'm a weed? Say the young man over. Wait, stop right there. Don't say another word. Whoopsie, me and my big mouth, I almost did your job for you. G Damn it, Maria! This is not good. Like hell, I'm gonna let her spill it on a whim. I have to do something before she has another slip of the tongue. I, uh, Morgana. What she was trying to say is... Is that I, uh, uh, I... I have to go. What? I have to go to the bathroom. Sh sure. <laughs> <laughs> My size ain't gonna last much longer if you keep this up. This is no laughing matter. Ow, what the hell? Don't throw things at me. You did it first. <laughs> Damn it all. Ah, now that was a good laugh. God, you're such a dork. How hard is it to just say it? It would have been easier if you hadn't cornered me like that. You expect me to believe you would have done it without a little nudge? I, I would have, eventually. Eventually ain't gonna cut it. Now's the right time. And don't worry me and the girls- <laughs> Don't worry, me and the girls won't make fun of you too much for getting your rocks off to little girls. That's not the reason I like her. Besides, I would- Um, I'll wait at least four years before. Doesn't mean you can't tell her now. I think it'd do her wonders, really. She's, well, you know. So I think knowing someone cares about her will lighten the load a bit. I mean, obviously we care about her too, she's like family. But there are some things his silly love just can't hold a candle to. Wishy romance may not be my cup of tea, but that doesn't mean even I don't think it'd be nice to have something special every once in a while. When she comes back, give her the necklace and tell her how you feel. And if she turns you down, we can all have a good laugh about it. Maria and a few other girls chuckled. My lips had twisted almost into a knot from sheer overwhelming discomfort. But at the same time, I knew she had a point. I could say how I felt just... I could say how I felt now just as easily as four years from now. It couldn't help into anything for some time yet, no. But simply letting Morgana know that someone cared about her, and her specifically, could very well lighten some of the load she bore. As much as she had warmed up to us, she still very clearly kept herself walled off. And though she tried to pretend otherwise, she did still get rather gloomy whenever she passed by something reflective. But if I could convince her that her physical appearance had no bearing on my feelings, then maybe, just maybe, it could clear the way it could clear away some of the clouds hanging over her. Possibly even light the way to the day when I could at last see her smile. That was all the motivation I needed. I'll do it. I'll tell her. Not only for myself, but for her as well. I can do this. And now I'm making myself nervous as hell. Calm yourself, Jacopo. This is nothing. You infiltrated the Lord's Manor for crying out loud. Telling a girl how you feel is considerably less likely to kill you. Even a child could do it. You, t you look so tense, your nerves could snap at any moment. I am not. 
God damn it, please hurry up, Morgana. I want to get this over with as soon as possible. <coughs> Was that a... Sounded like a scream. Trouble with a client, maybe? No, it didn't sound like that kind of scream. Something's wrong. I can feel it in my gut. Maria, I need you to take the girls down to the cellar, now! Uh, Alright, I'll send them down, but I'm coming with you to see what's up. It could just be a client causing a ruckus. No, you go with the girls. I'll check it out. Now get moving! Uh, okay, I'm going. Wake up, Jaren, come on! Uh, now! Oh boy, here it comes. Following the first, there were several more screams intermingled with what sounded like men shouting from the guest room. Something very bad was happening out there. My sword is back at the armory, damn it! Taking a brief detour to the kitchen to grab a knife, I then dashed through the corridor toward the source of the disturbance. Shoving my way past several layer thick makeshift curtain. Ah, no, help! Ah! Stay back! I'm just a customer! I, I don't have anything! Ah! What the hell was I seeing? Why was this happening? Is this seriously all they got? Might worth more than most of this garbage. Take the horse alive, you hear me? They'll probably sell for more than anything else we find. They were laying waste to the brothel. Un untrained, unarmed, and unclothed, the girls and their clients alike were helpless against the slaughter being rained down upon them. Bludgeoned. Mutilated. Massacred. A good dozen men, these by the look of it, had swarmed the brothel, utter utterly ravaging it. Blood splattered every which way, staining the colorful fabrics hanging on the walls. The stench of blood, screams of agony, cries of fear, and hoots of mad glee all blended into one sickening blur. <laughs> I nearly stepped into the chaos, but stopped myself at the last second. I was furious. Of course I was. I knew those girls, and this band of barbarians was slaughtering them before my very eyes. I want nothing more than to charge in and rescue all of them. But I also knew damn well that me charging in there alone would accomplish nothing. Damn it! Why now? Why here? Why? Oh, stop. Hold on. How'd they get so many men in here? If there were any sense of organized movement, someone would have noticed. I would have heard about it. How did they manage to sneak past everyone we have on patrol? How is it even possible that a bunch of damn bandits managed to organize a raid of this scale without anyone catching wind of it? God damn it. There's no saving anyone in the guest room. I need to find whoever else I can and get them out through the back. As soon as I had decided there was nothing I could do here, my next job was obviously to minimize any further loss of life. I knew logically it was the smart thing to do. But the knowledge didn't do anything to quell the anger roiling around inside me. And then another thought snapped to the front of my mind, rattling me further. Morgana! She said she was going to the bathroom, which meant she hadn't come this way. Or so I dearly hoped. But hope wasn't enough to overcome the fear that she had. I searched frantically for any sign of her, more panicked than even I realized. I knew exactly what one of these brutes would do to Morgana if they happened across her. A prostitute in decent health they would merely take captive. But seeing Morgana's face, they would assume she had a kind of disease. And they would kill her without a second thought. Morgana! Pretending to take my search elsewhere, I set off, my shadow suddenly darkening. But in too much of a rush to notice, something seemed to crash into me from behind. The world flashed in and out of view. For a split second, the multicolored fabrics around me appeared in black and white. I barely held on to my consciousness. A few seconds later, the pain set in. Gah! My gaze drifted downward to the curious protrusion in my stomach, the tip, of the tip of a blade sticking out of my gut. Blood streamed along the metal surface. What? I, I twisted my body, distinctly aware of every minuscule movement of the blade as it slid through raw flesh back out of the hole it had entered. It was almost enough to make my legs buckle. When I finally managed to turn all the way around, there stood a large man, probably grinning. He kicked me backward, and then... Ah! Rammed his heel through the gash in my stomach. I let out an, I let out an animal animalistic howl. It was a pain unlike any I had ever experienced before. I felt as though I had been struck by lightning. 
the only thing I had room for in my mind was overwhelming agony. And before long, it reached its breaking point. Ah, ah, damn it. And the whole world went black. Jacopo! Jacopo! Wake up, please! Open your eyes! I can't have you dying on me, too. I'm begging you, open your eyes! Ah, uh, uh, Jacopo. Where, where am I? The back room of the brothel. I'm alive. Where is she? God, L lie back down, or are you trying to kill yourself? You're hurt bad enough as it is. Ah, uh, uh, I've been bandaged up. They're still bright red. I guess the bleeding hasn't stopped. I'm cold. I swear to God, I was sure I had lost you. Maria, are you crying? You got a problem with that? I'm sorry. How many years has it been since I last saw her cry? It was back when she was 12, I think. Besides us, there are two other girls here. No sign of Morgana or Jaren. This can't be everyone who made it, can it? Ah, I have to see. What did I just say? Lie your ass back down. You need to give it some time to heal before you move around much. Ah. Jacopo! Ignoring Maria's pleas, I stumbled my way toward the guest room, leaning against the wall for support. I had evidently lost quite a bit of blood. I was freezing cold and constantly on the edge of vomiting. My body was heavy, like someone had strapped a boulder to my back and my vision swirled, destroying with each step I took. I knew it wasn't that long of a walk from the back to the front, but it felt like it would take me ages just to get down this hall. Like I was on an endless march towards a vast, empty abyss. Ah. I braced myself, but what I felt when I stepped into that room was a despair too deep for words. The meager scraps of strength that had carried me this far dissipated, and I slowly slid down to my knees. The door hung open, the blood soaked curtain flapping in the wind. The deep crimson was a stark contrast against the brightly colored fabric. The girls had dyed it themselves. I could still remember Maria first telling me about, about it however many years before, her eyes alight with pride. How when you put a whole bunch of different colors together, it made the place seem almost otherworldly. And the patrons who had been drawn in by its allure today had not found themselves in the land of milk and honey, but instead been cast into a pit of death. Several corpses lay motionless around the room, their faces twisted in agony, their eyes vacant. What the hell? Why? How could this happen? I asked, stupefied, neither expecting an answer, nor trying to place the blame on anyone's shoulders. It was an empty, meaningless lamentation, powerless as the men who had uttered it. All of us felt the same way. Hopeless, helpless, horrified. Not more than an hour ago, we had been having a party for God's sake. Fooling around like a bunch of idiots, the girls complaining about their clients, plates of food specially made for her birthday. Her birthday. Where's Morgana? I couldn't find her. Why not? I'm sorry. I looked everywhere, but I couldn't find her. I'm so sorry. I wanted to tell her I wasn't blaming her, but I couldn't find the words. If anyone, it was myself I was disappointed in. How could I have failed to keep her safe? Why had I been unable to find her? Why was I so damn powerless? This was supposed to be a good day for her. I wanted to make Morgana's 12th birthday into a special occasion, something truly memorable, to celebrate the bright future ahead of her. And I had failed, in the worst way imaginable. What was supposed to be a celebration of life had ended in a pile of corpses, most of the surviving girls taken captive, and the brothel in shambles. And Morgana, who it was all supposed to be for, was most likely dead as well. Ah. She. She was dead. Morgana was dead. Before I had the chance to say anything, the girl I loved was gone. Ah. All because I was weak. Because I hadn't been cautious enough. Because I was completely, utterly powerless. And now, she was gone for good. Before I had managed to make her smile even once, I was... I was going to show her the world? How full of myself was I? 
I hadn't done a single damn thing for her. God. Uh, uh, ah! Physical strength was meaningless for what I wanted to achieve. What good was being number two in our little band of peacekeepers if I couldn't even stand up to a pack of bandits? I didn't have any real power. I was worthless, helpless, weak. My sole job was to keep this place safe, and it was painfully clear now how unsuited to the task I was. My initial fears were right. Were right. It was only the four of us who had made it through the assault. Maria said that while they had made it to the cellar safely, they were soon discovered and most of the girls taken captive. Jaren included. If only she had quit, left the brothel, taken up singing at the pub, then she could have been spared this. Spared having to be kidnapped for the third time. But because she thought of us as family, because she cared about and wanted to be with us, she was taken away. If I had power, this all could have been prevented. Not physical strength or skill with a blade, but real meaningful power. Political influence import. If I weren't a peasant, no one would dare stand up to me. No petty thieves would ever consider raiding my property. I could have hired guards to watch over the brothel. The only reason the lord that reprehensible man was still alive was because he had real power, enough to assure his own safety. If I had that kind of power, everyone would still be here safe and sound. I could have made certain of that. Maria wouldn't be crying. Jaren would still be a part of our family. And she, Morgana, would still be alive. She would still be by my side. That one simple thing keep anything like this from happening again. In short order, Gratian burst into the brothel. Seeing the carnage he wielded in grief, which quickly transformed into fury, I watched on, only really half paying attention as he raged. He marched over and said something or another, though I couldn't say what. After the fact, Maria told me that I had been in, in a stupor the whole time Gratian was here. He had apparently tried to cheer me up, though soon found himself frustrated and finally disappointed me. I was wondering where he was, too. It took three days for me to get back on my feet. There was no sign of Morgana's body anywhere in the ruins of the brothel, which meant there was a chance, however slight, she was still alive. I clutched tight to that tiny sliver of hope, searching desperately for any sign of her. Maybe she had realized something was wrong and gone into hiding. But no matter how many people I talked to, no one had seen anyone who matched the description. She was just gone, like a puff of smoke. Which left two possibilities. Either she had been taken along with the other girls to be sold off, or she had been killed and her body di disposed of somewhere out of sight. While the latter seemed significantly more likely, deep down I still yearned for even the slightest trace of her. Maria encouraged me to let go and move on, though I knew her well enough to know it wasn't out of lack of compassion. The whole affair had visibly taken its toll on me. One day about a week later, my wounds still healing, I made my way to the slums. Nestled away in the alleyway stood a nondescript little shack. I knocked on the door and a few moments later, it slid barely half an inch open, just enough for the sole resident to peer out at me, suspicion clearly visible in her eyes. But once she realized it was me, warmth filled her gaze, and she waited for me to come inside, a gesture that somehow made it feel like I was being invited into another world entirely. Beyond the door stood a noble woman who held herself with an elegance and grace unbefitting of the slums, but a darkness that felt right at home. I heard about the attack on the brothel, and that you were hurt. I'm so glad to see you're well. You were concerned about my safety? The woman pulled back her hood, revealing her face. Though age had clearly begun taking its toll on her, there was still a striking beauty to her, a kind of beauty impossible to attain down here in the Drake's society. Her hair was a burnt brown, her skin dark, and her facial structure somewhat similar to mine. I remembered then that this, isn't the, this wasn't the first time I had seen her, though it was fairly recently, not that many years ago, she would have me believed. We had briefly crossed paths on the day of the Midsummer Festival. The woman I had bumped into, that was her. Of course, show me a mother who is not always concerned about her child's safety. The woman's name was Ginerva. Oh, Ginevra. And she claimed to have been a maidservant for the previous lord. It was unusual enough for someone of her stature to be living in a rundown shack in the slums, but her story got even stranger. She had supposedly had intimate relations with him. She had borne his illegitimate son, and a month earlier, she had come to me and said I was that child. Says the woman I'd never seen until a month ago. Physical distance has no bearing on a mother's love. 
If you had gone to speak with the Lord and revealed your lineage when I first came to see you, you would never have been in that kind of danger. Ginevra spoke as though she knew exactly what had been going through my mind this past week. The very words that had dominated my thoughts as I looked out upon the wreckage. If only I had done as she said and asserted my nobility. Then I would have had power to prevent the attack in the brothel, to protect the people I love. If what Ginevra said was true, the Barnier family once possessed more land than even the king. That land, and the family, was divided up between each of their sons. The Barniers were only a few generations removed from the current royal family, which was why they controlled so much land in the first place. And that meant, though it had diluted with each successive generation, there was still royal blood in the Barnier bloodline, and a child begotten by the previous lord was more than entitled to a place among the nobility. However, realistically speaking, even if I had lent my ear to her cajolery, it wouldn't have changed anything. Or worse, I could very well no longer be in this world. I wasn't stupid. This noble woman, she was just using me. There's still time. Go to the Lord's Manor now. Show him. I'm not really your son, am I? Ginevra fell silent for a moment, observing me. I had no memories of my mother. Sure, it might be nice if she were to show him back up someday, but it just wasn't likely. Her whole story was extremely contrived. The sun could decide to rise from the west one day and there would still not be a drop of noble blood in my veins. I knew perfectly well how filthy the blood in me was. Discussions will progress much smoother if we both know what the other wants out of this arrangement. Start by telling me who you really are. Were you actually a maidservant for the previous lord? Yes, I was. She gave a nod, then walked over to a grimy shelf and retrieved a ring that looked very much out of place. It was made of gold, engraved with an elaborate insignia. There wasn't a metal worker anywhere in the slums or the city proper at that who could craft a piece of a piece so intricate. Look at this, it's the Barnier family crest. The previous lord gave me the ring as a gift, and I've kept it ever since even after our relationship was discovered and I was chased out. I didn't sell it because I knew I was with child. They will have no choice but to acknowledge you as a legitimate heir if you show them this ring. Why did you wait so long to come find me then? I was afraid they might kill you if I brought you in as a baby. Why were we separated? Misfortune. One day bandits came and kidnapped you. Presumably they were hired by the Barney estate because they didn't want your existence coming to light. I consider it a miracle you're still alive. I can only imagine the stern look on my face as I listened to Ginevra speak. Part of me did indeed want to take everything she said as true. Wanted to believe I was someone important. Wanted to grab hold of the fantasy that I did have noble blood in me and never let go of it. And had I not come face to face with my own powerlessness a week earlier, perhaps I could have swallowed the delusion. Used it as a step stepping stone for my dream to show Morgana the world. It would appear you've done your research. I don't have any other family to the best of my knowledge, which does indeed make me a good candidate for you to step in and claim your stake on. If I were to guess, your child with the Lord has either passed away or never existed at all. It's probably true that you worked at the Barnier's Manor, and it's probably true that you had a relationship with a former lord. You were chased out, and now you live in poverty. You want to go back to your former, more comfortable life, and while you're at it, take vengeance on the current lord. Or perhaps you simply want the entire noble class to suffer. The specifics of your motives are irrelevant, though. Being a woman, you have no means to accomplish that yourself, so you came up with the idea of using a fake son. If your child were still alive, he would be right about my age, wouldn't he? and we look similar enough for you to convincingly claim we're related. But the biggest reason you chose me is because I made something of a name for myself. Because I was one of the people involved in inciting the revolt three years ago. The perfect choice to spearhead a revolution. How dramatic, the man who set the Lord's slaves free was secretly his family. The people would eat it right up. So, how far off am I? Huh. <sighs> You're sharp for a filthy peasant. It would seem I chose wisely. I was right. She was a manipulative, conniving shyster. But her insults didn't bother me in the slightest. Those words made so much more sense than any mad claim that I had royal blood in me, that I was some kind of hero. Following suit, I twisted my lips up into a smirk. I was a filthy peasant, and I was fine with that. All it meant was that I had to claw my way to the top. I'm in. Alright guys, I'm going to have to end the video here for today. Thank you all for watching. So we finally got to the point where we had this flashback in the actual main storyline about how it all happened for Jacopo to become this uh, new lord. 
And now we're gonna see how it all uh, unfolds in the next one, guys. So again, thank you all for watching, and take care.